Every week on CBSN Denver, we get your coronavirus questions answered during a special segment called Q&A with Dr. Dave. Joining me now is CBS4 medical editor, Dr. Dave Nida. And Dr. Dave, the latest CDC guidelines now say people who may have been exposed to coronavirus but are asymptomatic may not need to be tested. What's your reaction to this change? This really was kind of a surprising change in guidelines. It was something that was literally posted overnight on the CDC website, and there really was not any explanation or further information for those of us in the medical community. It just simply showed up. And the problem is that this kind of goes completely opposite of what we had been told before. And so we're sitting here going, well, what does this mean? This absolutely winds up cutting the number of people who we are testing down uh, to a, a big significant degree. And so we asked the CDC, what is going on here? Why is there a change? And uh, the problem is, is that the answers appeared to point toward the orders or recommendations coming from someplace higher than the CDC. In other words, it uh, admittedly appears to be more of a politically driven type of guidance change rather than a medically driven type of change. And that makes us a little bit uncomfortable because we do like to rely on science rather than politics when it comes to taking care of you. And this comes on the heels of uh, recent uh, FDA issues when it came to the approval of convalescent plasma antibodies. The FDA wound up uh, rushing that through and later had to go on and admit the following day that uh, they had really overstated the case and used uh, misrepresenting misrepresentation of some figures. So we get a little bit nervous because these are the institutions medically that we trust for guidance and information. And we worry that, uh, well, less testing means fewer cases, which uh, certainly may look good, but doesn't really reflect what's going on in the world. So what does that mean to doctors? And what does that mean to you? Uh, I've had things pop up since this new change in guidance. And really what we're doing in many cases, we are going with what we have done before. That is, if you are sick and we suspect COVID, we will test you for COVID. If you have been exposed yet, do not have symptoms, we will recommend that you monitor yourself, but most likely be tested, even though you may not have symptoms. And if you have no symptoms and you are just simply concerned that you are going to possibly uh, expose someone, uh, a loved one perhaps who is at risk for uh, complications of COVID, uh, you should be tested as well. So I think we still are in favor of more testing rather than less. Absolutely. It sounds like any concerns or questions about it, just get tested to be safe is kind of the recommendation. Great. So exactly. kids are back in school. We've already reported on cases that have forced some schools to switch from in-person to remote learning. What should parents mm -hmm. be looking out for if they're concerned their kids may have coronavirus? Well, I think the important thing to think about right now is the fact that uh, the, the, the leading age group of COVID infections uh, is in children on the rise. Uh, there are a lot of kids around the country uh, nationwide. The numbers in school age kids are going up and up. We have not seen a tremendous spike in Colorado. That's a good thing. Uh, unfortunately, you look at places like Florida, which had uh, about 9,000 COVID cases in school-age children within about two weeks of the school systems reopening there. So you say, well, how do I know if my kid does have coronavirus? Does my kid have COVID? Well, that's kind of a tough question sometimes because we know that kids don't always get classical symptoms if they get any symptoms at all. And uh, so what that means is that the bar really is set very low when it comes to sending your child to school if your child is exhibiting any signs of illness. Uh, obviously, if they would wind up having fever, chills, aches, cough, and so on and so forth, you would be concerned because that would be classic COVID. But then again, too, 
What do you do when you have a kid who's got sniffles and a cough? Well, those kids should not be in school. Is it COVID? Well, I think that's a situation where a discussion with your doctor about getting some testing done is really a good idea. It's also good to find out really what is going on within the school system itself where your child is attending, see what's going on in terms of case numbers and really what is happening in within the school system so that you have an idea of just really what is uh, going on in the local environment to help guide your decisions. Great. That's great information for parents. Um, here's a big question. Now, their holiday weekend is coming up. We saw an increase in cases <laughs> around the 4th of July. So um, are you concerned there will be another spike after Labor Day weekend? I think we're all kind of concerned. I, I think a lot of us have this uh, you know, a set of images in our head of uh, what happened over Memorial Day and what over, uh, went on over uh, the 4th of July holiday when there were packed uh, beaches, there were huge crowds everywhere, there was partying going on, and cases did wind up uh, spiking up. So now, you know, as we go toward uh, Labor Day, what we're learning from that time uh, in the uh, beginning of the summer is the fact that we are now seeing more and more cases being uh, really driven by smaller clusters of, of people who wind up having uh, COVID. So what that means is that the risks are maybe uh, more along the lines of smaller groups getting together. And that means, so, you know, you get together with your family, you have a celebration, you have barbecue, you know, uh, neighbors get together. Uh, it's just smaller groups. And all it takes is one person in that group to have COVID and be a so-called super spreader and bang, uh, off it winds up going. So what are we to make of this whole thing? Well, the advice is actually very simple. We've been doing well so far. We need to continue doing what we are doing. So that means if you are going to have uh, some sort of get together, you need to still maintain the cautions that we have been doing with, in terms of hygiene, in terms of distancing, in terms of masks, so on and so forth. We cannot let our guard down as we go into a holiday weekend here. And so the advice is, you know, please keep up the good work and uh, let's have a, uh, a safe and a healthy holiday. Sounds great. Dr. Dave, thank you so much, as always, for joining us. We'll see you back here next Monday at 11 a.m. as we answer more coronavirus questions. And to see all of our Q&A with Dr. Dave segments, just visit cbsdenver.com. We'll be right back.